Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Like many of you, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, I've been cooped up in the house. And to try to stay busy, I've been messing around in Photoshop quite a bit. Those of you that follow me on Instagram know that over the past couple days, I posted a couple images where I've created a mirror image. That is, I had kind of a relatively mundane subject, but what I did was extend the image below it, make it look like it was in front of water, and I mirrored that shot in the water. And when the last image posted, a couple people um, mentioned that they'd like to see a tutorial on how it's done. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take this image here of the young lady. Now, obviously, she's already in water. What we're going to do is we're going to extend that water below her, and we're going to have her mirrored in the water. And you'll see what I'm talking about when we're done. Now, it's a multi-step process uh, with a formula involved, although the formula numbers are pretty loose. You could mess around with the numbers and kind of make it uniquely you. But with that said, because it's a multi-step process, you may want to get a pen and paper and take some notes as we go along. Now, the first thing we need to do is create what's called a displacement map. The displacement map adds ripples to the water so it looks more realistic. Now, to do that, we're going to create a new document in Photoshop. We're going to go up to File, New. And what you want is a vertical document or a portrait-oriented document with a width of 1080, a height of 1350. I have the resolution at 300, but that doesn't matter. And you want the background contents to be white. So we'll click Create. Now, once you have this document, what we need to do is just add noise to it. So we're going to go up to Filter, Noise, Add Noise. Now, with the Add Noise dialogs, this is where you could mess around with the numbers a little bit. I have an amount of 300. Gaussian, though, is what you want. So the amount is what you can mess around with, but make sure the distribution is Gaussian and it's monochromatic. And we'll click OK. Next, we're going to blur the noise. So we're going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And again, you can mess around with this number. I have it set to two pixels of blur, and we're going to click OK. Next, we're going to jump over to the channels. So over here on the right-hand side on the layers, you'll see right next to layers, it says channels. And by the way, I'm in what's called the photography workspace. If your Photoshop workspace doesn't look like mine, what you could do is you could go up to the top right-hand corner, hit this little drop-down, and make sure you're in that photography workspace. Then you could pop over to channels. And what you want to do is make sure you're clicked on the RGB channel when you do all of them are active. And what we're going to do then is go up to Filter, Stylize, Emboss. And here, if I can move it over there, we want an angle of 90 degrees, a height of one pixel, and amount of 500%. Again, you can kind of mess around a little bit here, but those, that's what I use and that's the way I was taught to do it. So I'll click OK. Next, we want to go to the red channel and we're going to Again, go up to Filter, Stylize, Emboss, and again, uh, we're going, uh, this time I think uh, we'll do the angle is 150, and then one pixel, an amount of 500, click OK. Now click on the green channel, and again, go up to Filter, Stylize, Emboss, and this time we'll change the angle back to 90. The height is still 1 and the amount is still 500 and we'll click OK. Now go to the top RGB channel again and click on that so all of them are active. Go over to Layers. Now we need to unlock the background layer. Just click on the little padlock over here. Now um, make it a lot smaller now because we're going to do something to distort these this embossed look. We're going to distort it even more. But you'll see what I mean. We're, so we're going to hit Command minus on my Mac. It's Control minus on your PC to make it considerably smaller. Now we need to go into free transform mode by hitting Command T on a Mac, Control T on the PC. Next, we're going to right click inside of here and we're going to go to perspective. Now this is where you can mess around quite a bit. If you look over on the top right hand corner, you'll see this W number. It's 100%. What I want to do is stretch that out between like 1500 and 2500 and somewhere you know so this is where you could make it look a lot different depending on you um i got i don't know around 1900 there that looks good right there 
maybe 1911, it doesn't really matter. Now you can mess around, you could right click in here and do different um, distortions to this. We use perspective, you could try different skews and distorts and things uh, to move these handles around so that you're making uh, the embossing, embossing that we just put on there look different and try to imagine it as ripples and then you'll get uh, what I mean. We're gonna click as it is now. I'm just gonna leave it as it is and click the check mark up at the top and hit Command Zero to fit it to screen so you could see uh, what we're looking about. So it kind of looks like waves and water. So you could distort this like I just did. I you know, used perspective and dragged it out to like 1900 or whatever on the width. Try it different ways. You could create multiple distortion maps and you could even apply more than one to an image, but you could use multiple ones and one might look better on one image, whereas another one works better on a different image. So now we're just going to save this. So we're gonna go up to File, Save. We're gonna save it as a Photoshop PSD file. I'm gonna give it the name um, DM, not SM, DM-1, so Distortion Map 1. That way if I create another one, I'll call that DM-2. And I'm gonna save it uh, to the desktop. Okay, so it's saved. And we can close it now. We don't need it right now. Now we're going to actually work on this image. What I'm going to do first is I want to crop it. So we're going to eliminate some of this water that's in the foreground already. So um, I'm going to hit the crop tool, get the crop tool by hitting the C key on the keyboard. The crop tool is right here. We're going to just make sure you're in a ratio with no numbers here. Just hit clear if there are numbers there. That way, you could come in here and do a free form crop. We're just gonna grab this bottom handle and pull it up so it's just at the bottom of our hand. Now up here, make sure that you're deleting the crop pixels and then click the check mark when you're done. Now what we need to do is duplicate this layer. On a Mac, hit Command J. On a PC, hit Control J. Now we're gonna go into free transform mode again. We're gonna hit Command T on a Mac, Control T on a PC. Next, we're gonna right click on the image and we're gonna flip it vertically. All right, so we have an upside down image. Click the check mark when you're done. Now, uh, make it so it's a lot smaller. Again, I'm gonna hitting Command minus several times on my keyboard on my Mac. If you have a PC, Control minus. Now we're going to go to the Move tool. V is the keyboard shortcut for the Move tool. It's the top tool up there. And we're simply gonna grab it and pull it straight down until is right there, you can't really see it. But then we're gonna get the crop tool again, hit the C key on the keyboard to get the crop tool. Go to the bottom handle and just pull it down until you have the whole image. Then click the check mark again and we'll hit Command Zero to come in. Now I got a tiny bit of a white line there. You see that? So what I'll do now is I'll go back to the move tool. I'll hit the V key on the keyboard, V for victory. And then I'm gonna hit the up arrow key once and it got rid of that line and then what I need to do is go back to the crop tool because when I move that up I made a little white line down here so hit the C key for crop and just pull that up and hit the check mark and we got rid of that white line at the bottom and hit command minus to make it a little smaller okay now we have our mirror image now uh, a lot of these steps are optional. I like to create a smart object now because that way I could go back in and change some numbers of like the displacement map and other sub types of motion blur I'll put in the uh, image. It's up to you. But right now I'll create um, a smart object by right clicking on layer one, the top layer, and go to convert to smart object. And again, this next step is optional. A lot of photographers don't like to do it, but I like to add a little blur, uh, motion blur uh, to the image. And this is gonna be this bottom part of the image because that's what this layer is if you look at it. It's just the bottom is what we're working on. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to filter, blur, motion blur. And uh, angle at 90 degrees. Now distance, I wish I could tell you the correct distance. Uh, distance really depends on the resolution of your image and really how much blur do you wanna impart on it. Uh, it's up to you. Now just move it around and, and make sure preview is checked and you could see what you're dealing with. Uh, let's see. I don't know, like 129 looks fine. All right, so we'll go with that. We'll click okay. 
Now I created, I got this little line in here again. So I'm going to again go to the move tool by hitting the V key on my keyboard for victory. Hit the up arrow key until that white line totally is gone. I think right about there is good. Now we're going to hit the crop tool again by hitting the C key to get rid of this white bar at the bottom. And we'll again push it up from the bottom and click the check mark and we're done. So we added some blur down there. Now we're going to add that displacement map that will add the ripples. So we're going to, and you go, and by the way, because I made it a smart object, if I need to change any numbers in this motion blur, I could just double click where it says motion blur and this box pops up again and I could change everything or anything there. So that's really uh, why I make it a smart object. Now we're going to add that displacement map. So we're going to go to filter, and uh, where was it? Uh, distort and then displace. And by default, it's going to show a horizontal scale of 10, a vertical scale of 10. The m bigger you make those numbers, the more of the ripple will be. So if we make um, like the vertical scale number bigger, uh, it, well, let's say the horizontal scale number bigger, the ripples will be more prominent in the shot smaller number less prominent i'm going to leave it at the default of 10. make sure you're on stretch to fit repeat edge pixels and if you did create a smart object like me make sure that you have that embed file data in smart object checked we're going to click ok now it's going to ask me to load our displacement map and remember we created it and put it on the desktop click on that and we'll click open and it's going to add the displacement map and you could see it added ripples uh, to that bottom part of the image. You could see the ripples there. Now, I'll just zoom out a little bit. Now, if I want to change those numbers, double click where it says displace. We could change maybe the horizontal scale to, let's say, 13, give it a little more prominent of a ripple. Click OK. It's going to ask us again for the displacement map itself. Click on that. Click that. So we added a little more ripple to it by changing that number. Now, some people consider themselves done at this point, but I like to do something else. Um, this again is optional to add a blank layer on top. I'm going to hit Command minus a couple times to make it a little smaller, Control minus on your PC. What I'm going to do is get the gradient tool, hit the G key on my keyboard for the gradient tool. And what we want is black to white gradient. All right. And then what, and we're going to do a normal gradient. That's the first one right here. And then we're going to go above the image, hold the shift key in and pull down and just draw like that. And you could see we added this gradient. Make sure that reverse is not checked. Dither is and transparency is. Now what I'll do is I'll go to uh, where it says normal for blend mode and change that to soft light. Now there's before and there's after. I don't like the after, but why I like to add this is because when I change the opacity, it's as though I'm relighting the scene. To change the opacity, I'm just going to hover over the word opacity and my cursor turns into the little hand with the horizontal arrows. That's a scrubby slider. Click with the left mouse button and just drag it to left and look at the image as I do this. See how it's kind of relighting the scene? I'll just bring it down to like 15%. There's before and there's after. Just a kind of a minor effect in this case. Some images I do it a bit more, some a bit less. Hit uh, Command Zero to fit to screen. So there is our finished image. Um, again, uh, that is by request because actually just two people mentioned in the comments of the last image I posted on my Instagram. I have a link to my Instagram in the description below the video. They mentioned they'd like to see a tutorial and since i'm stuck inside i figured i'd do this tutorial so um hopefully this helps i'd like to see your images if you do anything like this post it to instagram and tag me in it again i'll have my instagram link below and i'd like to see your mirrored images um I'm really interested to see what uh, everyone comes up with thank you everyone who watches my videos i really do appreciate it i'll talk to you guys soon <laughs>